as the gaming world becomes more and more reliant on interconnectivity with always online games powered by microtransactions, live service nonsense, and AI machine learning whatnot, many of us dweebs say no. We are the Dusty Game Society, and we refuse to have our games spoon-fed to us by evil robot overlords built to extract money in exchange for fun. We don't need anything more than to look back to the simpler days, back when games were bought once and enjoyed forever. Back when games didn't hold your hands or your feet to get you from point A to point Z. Back when games were just as simple as they needed to be to just be games that were fun. These are the games that call to us the Dusty Games. I'll tell you more about the DGS at the end of the video, but first, we have a very special game to share with you today. Our Dusty Game of the Month is none other than the famous Mother 3 on the Game Boy Advance. A special game, a piece of gaming history, and a game that we're excited to talk about today. So, without further dilly-dallying, as Mother would say, pun intended, let's enter the world of Mother 3, shall we? Yeah, this is an another game that I wish I played earlier because it's so dang good. But hey, that's the point of the Dusty Game Society, right? It's a chance to play the best games ever that we haven't played and a chance to experience these relics of gaming history. So going into this uh, game this month, I had very little experience with it or expectations. Uh, this is the sequel to uh, the Earthbound series and I'd never played Earthbound, although I'd heard lots of great things, obviously. And I knew lots of people say Mother 3 is one of the best RPGs ever. I had played a, an hour of it about two years ago and the little that I saw of the story left a lasting impression on me and I knew that I had to experience it properly someday. And that day is last month because this was the DGS game of the month last month, obviously. Mother 3 was released in 2006 in Japan for the Game Boy Advance, and fans were hopeful that the, there would be a North American release of the game. Unfortunately, that never came. The game never officially came out in North America, which is a shame, but lucky for you and me, the community stepped up and made an amazing fan translation. I played the latest version of the translated version, which you can find online or patch your own ROM yourself. And I gotta say, they did a freaking amazing job of this translation. I don't I don't think I came across a single point where the text felt like awkward or hinted that it was a fan translation. It was it was super well done, super professional, but it also sounded like it had a, a real human element to it. And considering the amount of text in the game, that's an impressive feat. I describe the style of the game as a heavily story focused linear JRPG. You're taken along this story which is divided up into chapters and you explore the world and get into battles with the creatures along the way. There are items to find, puzzles to solve, a little bit of exploring to find your objective, but for the most part it's a pretty linear trek, which is a-okay with me because the story is great and the game mechanics are solid. The combat seems like a, a pretty standard affair at first, a JRPG style turn-based battles that choose your attack, use your healing items, beat the bad guys and collect the loot, buy or find gear to get stronger, learn new abilities as you level up, mash that attack button and grind out some XP. Pretty standard JRPG stuff, but there are some unique things that Mother 3 does that help it stand out. For one thing, the battles have a rhythm mechanic to them. So, so when you're doing standard attacks, if you time your button presses to jam along with the music, you can get multiple chained attacks. I actually suck at this. It's hard to figure out the right timing based on the song. Even though one of the characters has an ability to help, I still found it hard. But it was super satisfying when I was able to pull it off. Eventually, you get your dog character called Boney, and he can sniff out the enemy's weaknesses. The thief character has crowd control and utility abilities, and there's magic in the game, but they call it psionic powers, which is really just magic. So you can use thunder on enemies that are weak to that, for instance, or fire or whatever, and you can heal and other stuff as the game goes on, and you can collect consumable items to heal and remove debuffs and attack items like bombs. The combat system is basic at first. It starts simple and it grows in complexity as the game goes on, which is exactly how I like it done. I don't want a thousand abilities at level three when I'm still learning the game, but I do want lots of options later when I'm bored of button mashing. That's what you get here. 
And one thing I really appreciated is how forgiving the save system is. If you die, you spawn at the last save frog that you talk to. You don't lose your XP or your items or anything. You, you just pick up right where you left off and continue the story from the frog place. This is one aspect that I personally really appreciated during the uh, tricky parts. You're taken from chapter to chapter as you learn about the lives of the main character and how they fit into the overarching story, which is really the star of the show. Your perspective as a player will change between characters. The early story focuses on the, me the members of a family, the dad Flint and the mother Hinawa and the twin brothers Lucas and Klaus. You start out as Flint and there is an early tragic event in the story that gives you an idea of the tone of the game. Despite the first impressions and the lighthearted music and the art style imply that this is a game of heavy emotions. The story is actually lighthearted most of the time. Lots of fun humor and jokes around every turn, but every now and then the story beats hit a serious tone that adds extra gravity as a, a contrast to the lighthearted stuff. For example, without going into spoilery detail, this one character, Duster, he has an abusive father that really resonated with me. <laughs> I'm not going to trauma dump on you here, but I really related to this character and his desire to please his father who could never be pleased, only thought of himself and blamed his own shortcomings on his kid. It's heavy stuff. The, their story plays out in a jokey kind of silly way like, oh, there's Duster's dad being a jerk again, haha. -ha. But the empathy that I felt for Duster was genuine. And I, my heart was in it because of that. Other moments in the game hit on friendship, on heartbreak, on, on the loss of loved ones, uh, despair and hope. I think it's absolutely brilliant, the story that they told and the, the emotions that they were able to explore. There are parts of the story that I will not forget, like ever. It's not going to be for everyone. There is some weirdness in there and some sci-fi stuff that I wasn't super into, but honestly, it's impressive that a game with pixel art and text dialogue made me feel the feelings that I did. I don't want to talk about the ending because obviously no spoilers and I just I don't want to set any expectations, but I'll just say that the ending was like, wow, what, what was that about? kind of thing. <laughs> and I actually had to look up an explanation of what happened because it's one of those stories that leaves lots unanswered and introduces new mysteries right as the curtains close. And that's not a bad thing at all. A game that leaves you thinking and wanting to talk about it after the credits roll is something to be celebrated. The music is super catchy. Like I said, there's a rhythm mechanic to the fight music, so you end up listening closely to that often. And now that I've finished the game, those tracks are like baked into my brain. My favorite part of the music was the unique tracks that are tailor-made for certain story parts. It really adds weight to the emotions when the music helps set the mood for the, the story. My only gripe with the sound is that it's GBA sound, which means that it's not very high quality. Fine for a handheld, but I played this with headphones on most of the time and I often wish that I had clean, crisp, clear audio instead of the lower bitrate GBA sound. The art is great too. I, I wouldn't say that it's earth shattering or anything, pun intended, <laughs> if you know you know, but it's got a great style to it and there's lots of detail in the characters and the extra animations that are needed throughout the story. And the backgrounds aren't super detailed for the most part, but the style is well done so it still feels like a high quality visual experience, even though there's not a ton going on lots of times. It almost has like a Saturday morning cartoon vibe to it. I felt like lots of the big open areas were a little samey and boring, but my favorite parts were the wind down scenes where there was lots going on. You know, lots of people to talk to and, and stuff to see. This game is a story. That's what it is first and first mostly. There is combat, exploration, there, there is a game here, but honestly the game itself isn't nearly as interesting as the story of the game. It's not short. I, I was almost at 30 hours, which is long for me, but you could probably finish it quicker if you wanted to. And it's not an epically long RPG that'll take you months and months or anything. I personally felt like it, it was a little dragged out at parts. There were times that I wanted to get to the next story part, but there was like a long slog through a tunnel or across some fields with a bunch of fights that I didn't want to fight to get there. It's not like it overstayed its welcome, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't bored at a few points. And while I appreciate the rhythm combat, I found it difficult and awkward and unsatisfying, so I rarely even bothered. That could have been better, I think. However, I wouldn't trade the experience for anything. 
because the actual story in this game is special. I felt real feelings and a connection to the world and the stories of these colorful little character sprites that I rarely get to feel, and that alone makes it worth it for me. I highly recommend playing it if what I've said intrigues you. And if it doesn't, then don't. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not your mother. Three. Uh, your, your mother, three. I, uh, okay. And now let's hear what the other members of the DGS had to say about the game, shall we? Shay D is a big fan of the Mother series and says that Mother 3 is a masterclass in storytelling. The punch at the end is incredible. A wonderful end to a wonderful series. And yeah, you nailed it, buddy. That's such a beautiful story. I'm, I'm excited to go back and play Mother 1 and 2 someday to see how the whole thing started. Borf played it on the RG Arc while camping in the cold. I hope you had fun, but maybe next time bring the ROG Ally. That, that thing will heat up a tent like none other. Darth Sully had already played the game, but gave us a review nonetheless. Says the charm oozes from this game, loves the subtle adultish humor, and comments on the elements of the story about excessive consumerism. Very well said, and I agree completely. 8.5 out of 10 root beers. <laughs> Super Scatman loved it too. Charming and stylish game, great sprite work, love the music, although they weren't as into the story. Felt like some sections were trying to fit a season of an anime into a single exposition dump. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt that way too at several parts. Eight save point frogs driving tiny cars out of ten. That's a, that's a fair score. Well played. AJP was too busy playing Bellatro to sink 30 hours into Mother 3. And, and you know what? I can't blame you for that. A quirky GBA game with a good story and fun mechanics is a tough sell when the addictive drugs that is Bellatro is calling your name. Ripska finished the game on what looks like a Mew Mini Plus with custom black buttons. Looking good, my friend. And I don't know if this is how Lakitu plays GBA games, but this is so cool. I had to show you. Check out this cozy retro game setup they have here. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't so jealous that I'm plotting to steal everything in this picture as we speak. Milk Toast Rat, <laughs> interesting name. Uh, this is their first turn-based combat game as an adult. Never had the experience as a kid. And I could totally relate to that. I was well into pretending to be an adult before I ever found the idea of a turn-based combat system enjoyable. Hope you end up finishing it, buddy. I'm glad you're liking it. Lady Astolat lost her save file, and then she lost her USB hole on her Miu Mini. That's rough, lady. Seda finished the game, found the story dark but with lots of lighthearted and wacky elements. Found it got difficult near the end, but they loved it overall. Play it whenever you get a chance. And uh, yep, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you should play it. Uh, probably. Pixel RPG found that the gameplay was fun and says the story hits you with the feels right out of the gate. And that is so true. <laughs> Man, those first like two hours are <laughs> bad. They didn't love the menu system, which I agree with, and overall felt it was above average and gave it 4 out of 5 musical notes. And you know what? Listen buddy, you can't just make up your own scoring system, alright? I give your final score a review of 1 out of 7 overripe bananas that you shouldn't throw out because your mom said she's going to make banana bread. And that brings us to the end, so I'll hand it off to the fake English accent guy to wrap it up. <laughs> Take it away, Gandalf. The Dusty Game Society is comprised of a group of like-minded retro gaming enthusiasts. Every month we play a new Dusty Game, handpicked by the dweeb himself from the annals of gaming history. We play it together, share our thoughts and our struggles, seek comfort in defeat, and revel in our victories. It's like a book club for retro games. Membership in the DGS is something that I do for my patrons, a little perk of supporting the important work that I do, and you can join the DGS and play our game of the month with us by using the link provided for you just below this video. But regardless of whether you throw money at a stranger on the internet, I hope you enjoyed this look at Mother 3. I hope we've inspired you to give it a try if you haven't yet, and of course, I hope you join us next time on the Dusty Game Society. Until next time, stay dusty my friend.